you've spent hours on your ice. The bar is perfect, the terminal colors are dialed in and everything works, everything matches. And then you open, let's say, Thunar, which is your file manager, and it looks like it belongs on a completely different computer. GTK themes are the final boss of Rising. Most people just pick the closest existing theme and live with the mismatch. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own GTK theme with your own exact colors in about 10 minutes. So, let's begin. And also, if I actually set the GTK theme to something that's going to match this color scheme, this is how pretty it looks. Okay, this is the GTK3 app calculator, which is just a simple calculator app. This is GTK4's clocks, this is Nautilus, and this is file roller. All of which are made to look this pretty by configuring your GTK theme properly. So let's get started with that. But first, let's talk about why this is annoying in the first place. See, GTK theming has always been messy. GTK3 themes don't fully work on GTK4. Libert Vita apps ignore most themes entirely. You find a theme that you like, but the accent color is wrong, and you try to edit the CSS directly, and suddenly buttons are invisible and checkboxes are broken. Now, most people try one of two things. They use either Umox or Themix or whatever it used to be called back in the day to generate a theme, but those tools are outdated and the output looks rough. And not just that, but most likely they don't work on Libidwita either, on GTK4 apps either. Or they try editing an existing compiled theme, changing hex values in the CSS. Now, that kind of works until the metadata of the theme gets out of sync with the colors, which not only makes for a disaster when you're actually trying to select the theme because it might show up as a completely different theme, okay, it just feels wrong because the color scheme is one thing, but the theme is just named completely something different, and that's just no way to rice because really, trust me when I say it, it starts to get in the way when you're trying to figure out what exactly you're choosing when it comes to your theme. But there's a better way. You modify the theme at the source level before it compiles. That way, everything stays consistent. The build process handles all the edge cases, and you end up with a theme that actually works. Now, here's a method that I personally used. We're going to take a well-maintained GTK theme, add our own color palette to it, and build it. Now, the GTK theme I have chosen for this endeavor is going to be Colloid GTK Theme by Vince Lewis. So I would be Colloid GTK Theme. So if I show you the GitHub repo right over here, it's the Colloid GTK theme for Linux, and it looks pretty sweet over here. And if I also show this to you in NWG look, okay, if you notice as I change the GTK theme from Rayhan dark to Capuchin dark to Colloid dark, all of these are basically based on the same theme, which is Colloid. So what you want to do is make sure to get the requirements all up and done ready basically just install this install the marine engine this is going to be for gtk2 if you are going to use that if not you can just leave it make sure to install sas c though because you definitely need this and the theme is not going to compile without that now what you want to do here is click on code and basically clone this repo so you might want to go into a folder and then just clone it so git clone that repo I've already cloned it, so I will just cd into that repo right over here, okay? And now if I list, there's a bunch of different apps, or not apps, but actually folders and files that are inside of this repo. The best part about this theme specifically is it's actively maintained. As you can see, changes were made last month instead of two years ago. And it also supports GTK3 and GTK4, Liberty Vita, all that fun stuff. And most importantly, it's designed in such a way that adding color schemes is very easy. Now, I've tested this method multiple times. If you follow these steps exactly, it works. Now, you might get a couple of errors here and there, but that's not something that you cannot debug on your own with a couple of Google searches. But mostly, this is the method that I used and the method that's going to be most likely to work for you as well. If you want to use a slightly different base theme, you might want to pick something like Graphite by the same creator. This is what Graphite Dark looks like. Okay, it's a bit more compact, but you can go with something like Graphite if you don't want to use Colloid Dark as a base. That works too. But fair warning, other themes might not be set up specifically for this workflow that I'm going to show you. So your mileage may vary. Okay, now before we actually begin touching any code, you want to decide on your color scheme. You need a few things, a background color, a foreground color, an accent color, and usually a few shades in between for hover states and borders. Like basically, you want to make sure that you have the 16 colors on a minimum. So let me show you what my kitty config looks like so you can see what I'm talking about. Custom... And if you're wondering why my colors are inside of this folder specifically, inside of custom and whatnot, it's basically tying in to the theme switcher that I have created. So basically, all I have to do is just select, okay, hold on, let me show you this with this waybar. There you go. 
All I have to do is just select my favorite theme amongst a list of a bunch of different ones. And what's going to happen is the setup is automatically going to adapt to that particular theme. This is pretty sweet if you actually like switching between different themes and don't like staring at the same wallpaper in the same colors all the time. And that is why I have this thing set up in this way. As you can see, as soon as I change the theme, the terminal adapts to those colors as well. And if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself without copying anybody's dot files and messing around with that sort of stuff, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's a program where I show you exactly how to do this, how to set it up line by line from scratch so that if anything breaks, you're able to actually troubleshoot it. And not just that, but you have the pride and joy of making something like this on your own instead of just copying. So inside of this theme switchers module, for example, I cover what theme switchers actually are, the different kinds, how to set up wallpaper-based theme switching, so on and so forth. All the stuff that you would need if you were to make something like this on your own. And if you were wondering where the code part actually is, that's somewhere around here. Yeah, so right here is where I actually explain to you how the entire thing is supposed to work, explaining the code line by line. So if you want access to this, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. Now, let's open this config file right here. And in here, you're going to at least need 16 colors minimum. So make sure you decide on your 16 colors for your particular color scheme. You can get them from the internet if you're making a theme that's based off of a theme that's already existing, or if you're going to make one on your own, just make sure to get 16 colors minimum. You're going to need a bunch more colors for the backgrounds, and I will show you where to get them in just a second, but make sure that you have those colors ready. Make sure to write them down because you'll need them in a minute. Okay, now once you've finished cloning and you're basically inside of this repo, you're going to want to create your palette file. So go into, okay, let's just open SRC, SAS, and in here you're going to find a bunch of different files here. The most important files that we're looking at is going to be underscore color palette dash your palette name. So Capuchin, Default, Dracula, Epiforest, Scruffbox, so on and so forth. There's a bunch of different ones. The ones that I've specifically configured is going to be this Rayhan one. That's going to be pertaining to this particular theme. As you can see, that's what it's called. So that is what's currently made. Let's say I wanted to make a new theme. Okay, what I'd have to do, CD, SRC, SAS. In here, you're going to have to make a new directory and then you're going to want to call it your... Okay, not make a new directory, but actually make a new file. So just copy color palette files. Just copy this one color palette file. You can take Capuchin or something like default. Okay, you can take this and then you can copy it over to color palette, your palette name. Let's say I wanted to make a new palette, something like, hmm, let's see, Horizon, Horizon palette. And if you're wondering what Horizon looks like, this is what it looks like. Okay, it seems to be a very warm theme, something that you would use in summer. Okay, looks pretty beautiful. That's the theme, let's just say, for example. So let's put that here, color palette, horizon.scss. I want to copy that over, and if I now open color palette, horizon, horizon.scss, you will see colors that look like this. Now, these are the default colors that are going to be part of the, of the GTK theme. Okay, they're not the colors that would actually be part of the horizon theme. But if I were to actually turn this into the horizon theme, I would just change this to horizon theme color palette and let me go to the colors that are inside of horizon so i can see what to change so horizon.conf in here i can see a bunch of the different colors now for red light and red dark i just have to copy this and paste it here copy this paste it okay copy and paste now seems like these are actually the same color which doesn't really matter too much if we actually need a light and a dark variant of a color and it ends up being a problem we can deal with that later but for now, this is what we've got, okay? So magenta or purple, that ends up being here. So we can just paste, copy, paste. Yep, they're the exact same color. Just copy and paste that here. And you basically do the same for all of the other colors as well. Now, the part where you're going to want to go to an external website to get more colors is going to be this part for gray. Now, you have a lot of different colors over here. You have 050, 100, 150. So that's going to be, let's say, a 50 increment. So... That's one, two, three, four, five, basically a lot of colors, okay? Now, if you want to get all of these different colors and you don't want to actually figure out how to write each of these hex values yourself, just make sure to get the base color, the base background color for your color scheme. So if I'm picking horizon, in my case, it would be 1C1E26. And you want to go over to this place called colorhexa.com. So once you go to colorhexa.com, just go here, click on this search box, and then make sure to type in 1C1E26 or whichever color you're going with, okay? 
So once you type that in, it will give you color information for this particular hex color. So here you can literally get to know the entire background history of the color, the entire lore. So this is RGB in decimals, RGB in percent, CMYK, HSL, all of the different values you could possibly want. Now in here, the most interesting part we're going to want is the shade and the tint color variation. So a shade, what is a shade? To explain it in simple terms, a shade is a color which has black added to it. A tint is a color which has white added to it. Let's say I took this color and then I added a bunch of black to it and made it darker. That would be a shade of this color. Let's say I took white and then added a bunch of white to this color. That would make it a tint of this particular hex. That's basically what we're doing when it comes to this color 1C, 1E26. Now, 050 ends up being somewhere all the way here. So you're going to want to copy this, paste it here. Then you just have to keep working your way back like so until you have already filled up all the colors. And for white and black, you can choose the foreground color perhaps. For white and for black, you can choose the background color or you can just keep white and black as it is. For button close, maximize and minimize, you can also choose the different colors. This is most likely going to apply if you're on a desktop environment. Otherwise, if you're on Hyperland and you're able to customize the title bars like I am over here, you'll be able to choose these colors depending on the config that you have in your hyperland.com file. Okay, the colors that you have used over there. But anyway, that should be it for this. So make sure to copy all these colors and then paste them accordingly. So 050 would be this color, 100 would be this color, 150 would be this color, wait, this color, and then 200 would be this color and so on and so forth until you have made this section possible. Okay, that would be it for your color palette. Great, now that we have actually done that, what you're going to want to do, this is incomplete by the way, I have definitely not completed it. So we're just going to deal with it anyway. Okay, once you have that new file, have we actually copied it over? Yep, we have. Great. Now, once that's done, you're going to want to register your palette. So creating this file isn't enough. You have to actually tell the build script that your palette exists. So you're going to want to just go to directories up. And here you want to type install.sh. And you need to add your color scheme to scheme variants. So right here, you're going to want to put in your color scheme. Let's just call it horizon. So here I've already added one, which is Rayhan, which is this current theme. But you're going to want to add your theme here as well. That's going to be the first place where you're going to add it inside of scheme variants. Next place is going to be inside of the help text. So inside of the usage text right over here, okay, inside of this tweak section, you're going to want to add your tweak right here after the theme and add it here as well, color schemes version. Once you add it over there, we'll just work our way down, see where else we need to add it and here. So the next place we're going to add it in is inside of this case, inside of dash dash tweaks, okay? this case would be here. So inside of this while loop, okay, case, inside of this case statement, you want to go all the way down. And inside of this tweak section, you want to add in your color scheme right here. So right now I've already added Rayhan, so I'll just copy this, copy this part, and then just change it to horizon. I'm pretty sure I didn't add horizon above, but that's fine. I'm just showing you how it works. Horizon. Okay, scheme variants, you're going to want to four, five, six, this is going to be seven. And you just want to change this to horizon. Hold on. Horizon. Color scheme version. That's it. Shift. So on and so forth. You know what? Let's just go back and add that over here as well. So we'll add that. Horizon. Here too, we will add slash. Hold on. Horizon slash. Great. Now let's scroll all the way down. Okay, we've added it here. Fantastic. Next place we're going to add it is inside of the color schemes function. Now, after Capuchin, you want to copy this section and paste it right here, change this to horizon. And color scheme, or scheme color, is going to be set to horizon here. Just change this to whatever theme that you're going to be using. Okay, once that's done, that should be the last of it. And let's scroll down. Yep, that was the last. So those are all the changes that you need to make to the install script in order to get it to work. Great. Now, you're pretty much done. If you run dot slash install dot sh dash dash help, you will find that horizon is an option here somewhere. There you go. Horizon is an option. So if you had to pass in a tweak, you would pass that in as tweaks horizon. Now, this is the part where you adjust a bunch of other flags as well. So you might want to add something like dash c dark to get the dark variant. And that's pretty much it. So tweaks is going to be horizon dash c color is going to be dark. And that should be it. That should give you the horizon theme that you were looking for. And if you want to do this for a light theme as well, you just do the same thing. Just make sure to switch up the colors. 
That's it. Don't touch any of the other settings when it comes to a little bit wider because that you are going to install by copying the GTK4 you know, folder to your .config folder. That's how you actually set that up. Okay, so when you run this command, when you run the command like this, let's say I ran it with this one, with RxYHN, Rehan, let's say I ran this, okay? It would most likely put it inside of .themes. So if I went to .themes, .themes, I should find my theme folder in that, which I do, Rehan, dark Rehan. So let's just go inside of there, okay, inside here, and what we're looking for is GTK3 and GTK4. Now, it's enough to get the GTK3 3 theme working if you put this inside of here, but for GTK4, you just have to copy GTK4.0 to dot slash home slash dot config. So you put this in here, make sure it's overwritten, and whenever you have to select your GTK4 themes, it should work properly. Let's just show you what's inside of here so you can see what's going on. So inside of GTK4, you have GTK dark and GTK dot CSS. Just make sure that these files are what are inside of your .config folder and you should be golden. That is how you set up your own GTK3 and GTK4 theme using your own exact colors. Now, here are a few things that trip people up, okay? First thing is don't use Umox or Themex. They're outdated. The themes they generate often have broken elements and they don't support modern GTK4 properly. This method is more manual, but the output is actually usable and fun once you actually get the hang of it. The second would be to not edit a compiled theme. If you go into dot themes and then start changing hex values inside the CSS, you're definitely asking for trouble. The metadata of the theme is not going to match and then it'll just mess things up for you in the future, which is why you'll want to build it from scratch like this using SAS C, which is a compiler. The third one is to not give up, okay? Don't give up after the first build. If something looks off, it's usually one wrong color in the palette file. Just check your shades, check your accent, rebuild, and then test again. It rarely takes more than two or three iterations in order to get it right. And one more thing, this method definitely scales. If you want multiple color schemes, let's say one for your dark rice and one for a light variant, just repeat the process. Create another color palette file, register it in the install script, build it with a different scheme name, and you're done. You can have as many as you want. Switch between them depending on your mood or your wallpaper, and the build system handles all of it. And if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one that goes along with this GTK theme that you've just made, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. And that should be it. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay racing. Mwah.